Welcome back to chapter seven. In this lesson, we'll briefly review the properties of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids in preparation for the next two lessons, which will discuss the types of bonding within these materials. The difference between metals, nonmetals, and metalloids can be explained by their ionization energies. Nonmetals, in the upper right part of the table, have high ionization energies. It is very difficult to make these elements lose electrons. In fact, they usually gain or share electrons in their chemistry. Metals, on the other hand, and other side, have low ionization energies. These elements readily lose electrons, which gives them the majority of their properties. In between the metals and nonmetals, we have metalloids. As you might guess, these elements have intermediate ionization energies, meaning they have properties somewhat in between metals and nonmetals. The metalist of all metals is cesium, who lives at the bottom left portion of the table because metallic behavior increases as we go left and down on the table. But most metals share these following properties. They're shiny solids, which is their most familiar property. It's actually the delocalization of their weakly held valence electrons that let them reflect light efficiently. Their delocalized electrons also allow them to conduct electricity and heat effectively. The metallic bonds within metals are relatively strong, giving them high melting and boiling points. Metals can also be easily shaped because their delocalized electrons accommodate shape changes. Most importantly for chemists, metals are easily oxidized. They form positively charged cations. Lastly, metal oxides tend to form basic solutions, though this is due to the basicity of the oxide anion more than anything that the metal brings to the table. Nonmetals, on the other hand, are pretty much the exact opposite of metals. Anything the metals do, the nonmetals don't. They don't conduct heat or electricity well, they melt and boil very easily, and they are often brittle. Chemically, they tend to gain electrons, making them good oxidizing agents. In fact, oxidization was named after a special nonmetal who is particularly good at gaining electrons. Because nonmetals often share electrons, they have one special property that leads to an incredible variety of compounds, the covalent bond. In fact, we'll see that carbon, the king of the covalent bond, has forms which are shiny, conduct heat and electricity well, have high melting points, and are incredibly strong. Lastly, before we wrap up, a note about noble gases. Noble gases are technically nonmetals, but to me, that seems like an insult to the chemical complexity of the nonmetals like carbon. Noble gases are uncolored, unless you hit them with a few thousand volts of electricity, like in the image. Noble gases are always gaseous, except under extreme conditions of low temperature or very high pressure. And noble gases are entirely unreactive. They are just so boring. Goodbye. <laughs>